back to another Tech Minds video. Now, when it comes to ham radio, a big part of the hobby is homebrew, tinkering, fudging, designing, breaking, testing, and pulling your hair out when something doesn't work. Now, all joking aside, a big new technology which has kind of blown up in the recent years is 3D printing. And yep, we can use 3D printing in our hobby of ham radio. Now, many of you have probably already discovered 3D printing and put it to good use. But for those that haven't yet, then keep watching because I'll show you a few little useful projects and then I'll show you which printer I use. Now, a good resource of 3D printer models that have already been made and designed is from a website called Thingiverse. I'll just head there and then type in ham radio in the search bar. You'll then be presented with hundreds of designs that have been uploaded by users for free for anyone to use. So let's take a look at the first one I have here. Now this is an extremely simple but effective design. Printing this took around two hours and that's because I increased the infill and also included supports. Now supports are used when there is an overhang and the printer nozzle would need something to print onto, not just thin air. Now these supports are printed in a way that makes them easily removable once the print is complete. So what is this? Well, most ham radios will have a speaker on the top. To assist the user in hearing the speaker more clearly, with a higher fidelity, this little device acts like a little mirror, but for sound waves and reflects the speaker output to the direction you have this pointed. Funny enough, I've seen users using cardboard boxes for this very purpose, so why not print one that make it look good? The next one we'll look at is a dipole antenna center insulator, which took around 45 minutes to print. Now, the idea with this print is to attach an SO239 or a BNC socket. You can then add your dipole wires to either side. Now there is a neat little hole with an ample support to slide over a fiberglass telescopic pole. The hole is quite small, so in theory it should sit quite near the top of the pole. The 3D print project contains two files, one for BNC socket and one for an SO239 socket. Of course, you'll need to supply your own connector and attach it to the 3D print using four nuts and bolts. You'll also notice two holes either side of the socket. Now this is where you can attach the antenna wire and it also adds some strain relief when feeding through those holes. I would imagine this is quite a versatile project and with the use of a one-to-one -one ballon or ugly ballon, it should work just like a regular dipole or inverted V. Now the next project we'll look at is a pair of mast holders. These are simply designed to slide over a telescopic mast and will fit in the position where the mast becomes the same thickness of the tube section. The download from Thingiverse actually contains two files, which you could print off separately or like I did, you can print two at the same time. You just need to drag each of these files onto your 3D printer slicing software, more of which I'll talk about later. As these items have holes in them, I chose to include a raft, which is a thin layer of plastic laid down by the printer before the actual print starts. This is to provide a better adhesion on the first layer. Now the total time for both of these was around four hours. Expect them to take a little less time if printing them individually. Now, if you wanted different sizes, you can use the slicing software to simply enlarge or decrease the size. Just remember that every part of the design is changed if you alter the design. Now, this particular design has three holes, allowing you to add your own guy wires. Now, the next project is quite fitting for the previous project because these can be used as ground stakes for your guy wires. Now, they're labeled as radial ground spikes, but if the ground is soft enough, then you could use them for guy wires. If you want to make them stronger, then you can adjust the fill rate to make them more solid. Of course, these won't replace metal ground stakes for strength, but they are very light, so quite suitable for POTA or SOTA activities. Now, print time for these were around 47 minutes each. Depending on the size of your build plate, you could potentially print more than one at the same time. So here we have two of the projects in use. The stakes are anchored to one of the lower pole supports that I showed you previously. You can see how the smaller mast support sits in position because of the thickness of that telescopic pole. In this case, I'm using a 10 meter DX commander pole. The next project we'll briefly look at is a case for an MMDVM modem, which also holds a 3.5 color touch next in screen. Now you may have seen lots of digital hotspots in the past that come with those little one inch OLED displays. 
Well, by connecting up a Nexting display to your hotspot, you can have a nice looking display offering lots of information, depending on what configuration and which layout you have loaded onto the Nexting screen. I do have a dedicated video on how to connect a Nexting screen to an MMDVM hotspot if you'd like to go and watch that after this. Now the reason for this print is because there just isn't anything commercially available for what we want to do. So having a 3D printer and a design like this makes it nice and easy to create our own products. As a couple of bonus 3D printer projects to take a look at, how about an adjustable coil for an antenna base? Now this one made by M1 EGC Antennas is being sold on their website and marketed as a Slidewinder DX. I have a dedicated video on this product too if you're interested in seeing how well it performs. However, if you want to make your own, then there's plenty of designs available on Thingiverse. Just type in coil and just make sure your printer has the available height for the print, as some of them are actually quite tall. Now another 3D printed project which can be found for sale on the web is the Ice Cream Cone version 2, which is a helix antenna for transmitting on 2.4 gigahertz. It also incorporates a cutout for inserting an LMB for 10 gigahertz reception. Now this version two has already been covered on my channel, but if you do not want to pay for version two, then you can actually download the 3D project for version one for free and then just print it yourself. Now let's finish off by talking about the specific printer I now use, and that's the Flashforge Adventure 3. Now this printer has been around for a couple of years and it's still a very popular. The reason being is that it's extremely easy to use. In fact, this is a popular choice of printers that you would find in schools and colleges, mainly down to the ease of use. Now, in the past, I've used other 3D printers, which while worked, took a lot of time to get set up and print successfully. The Adventure Flash Forward 3 setup was so easy and the print is actually quite outstanding. So once unboxed, there's a small calibration procedure, which literally takes a couple of minutes. After this, you're ready to insert your 3D printer material into the side compartment, connect the printer to your network, and then send a print job. The 3D model is also shown on the printer's LCD, so you can make sure it's printing the correct job. Now being fully enclosed, it keeps the temperature inside very stable, and not adjust with wind or people walking past the printer. This most likely directly benefits the Flashforge Adventure 3 success at printing without fail. Now the printer can connect either wirelessly to your network, which you can configure directly on the printer, or you can connect an ethernet cable into the ethernet port on the rear of the printer. Now being an enclosed type printer, you also benefit from less noise during printing. The printer that I use, the Venture 3, has a maximum print model size of 15 by 15 by 15 centimeters, which is quite sufficient for most builds. However, if you require more surface area, then the Adventure 4 can print 22 by 20 by 25 centimeter. Now the price of the Flashforge range is a little higher than some of the other 3D printers you see on the market. And while it seems like a good idea to buy cheap, spending that little extra money on a 3D printer that's not only quieter, but provides almost flawless prints first time is somewhat of a major plus. Well, at least for me. It means you have more time to spend playing ham radio than you do tinkering around trying to get a printer to work. Of course, if you don't want to rely on the designs of others, then you can create your own designs completely from scratch using 3D modeling software. Many people have made businesses from creating 3D products and many have used 3D printers to solve problems around the home or within their hobby. You will be surprised by the amount of 3D projects there are on Thingiverse, so even if you do not own a 3D printer yet, then take a look on the Thingiverse website and get inspired. You never know, you might just design the next must-have print for the ham radio hobby. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.